somehow I, oh, there, there we go. Hello, everyone. We are just going to give people a minute to pop on to the Groomers Pro Wheatley Wears Wire Coat webinar. Um, welcome. So for those of you just jumping on the call, this is the Wheatley Wears Groomers Pro Wire Coat and INB webinar. So welcome everyone. We're just going to give people a couple more minutes, well, one more minute to pop on to the call and then we are going to get started. I keep somehow losing my bottom toolbar. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you to our sponsors, Groomers Pro and Wheatley Wears, INB, Angels Grooming Apparel, and just letting everybody get on to the webinar. And we will get started. All right. Um, Just trying to get back to my webinar and wondering here we go. All right. Welcome everyone to the Wire Coat Type Grooming Classroom. I am Allison Alexander of Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and I am very grateful that you have decided to spend the next hour with us. This webinar is presented by Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, INB and Angels Grooming Apparel and please stay on till the end of the webinar or watch until the end of the recording to get some very valuable discount codes. And we would really like to thank our sponsors for bringing this free education to people in a time when we're stuck at home. So we're aimed at new people in the sport, at new groomers, at groomers that have been in it for a long time, maybe want to upgrade their skills, for people trying to figure out how to maintain their dogs at home, and for people with show dogs, people of all levels, there is something here for you. Um, if we do have time at the end, we will take questions on the Q&A function. So the Q&A function um, is at the bottom of your screen. Please do not use the chat box because that just gets lost in the whole Zoom process. And you can submit questions anytime during the webinar. Um, we'll only answer them at the end, but we will try to get the, to them time allowed. Um, and so if you have, if during a discussion, you have a question, just jot it down so that we know what to answer. So again, very happy with our sponsors, Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, INV, and Angels Grooming Apparel. And most of the products featured here, the grooming products are by Chris Christensen. So here we go. Um, a note about grooming wire-coated breeds. So for me, the biggest misconception is that wire coats cannot be bathed, especially their top coat, or they would lose texture. So this is something that has been ingrained in many people from literally old terrier people in the sport. Um, and it's been ingrained in us for generations. So I've been in dogs for a long time. Um, I had my first show dog when I was seven years old. I started working for a professional handler that worked on wire coated breeds when I was 12 years old. Obviously I just did, you know, the Joe jobs, but you still learned everything then. And the conception was you could not um, bathe the top coat, so the jacket part of wire coated dogs because they would lose texture or their jacket would blow, which means instead of that coat laying nice and thick and even close knit to the body, um, it would lift up and be frizzy and fuzzy, somewhat like a shaved coat would. Now, of course, terriers are supposed to have this really harsh, um, tight fitting jacket because they were going against vermin, so as to protect them from that. They were going through brum brambles and burrs, and they were going like under bobbed wire fences to get after game. They were going down holes. So that's why they needed this really, you know, tight fitting to the body, like harsh outer coat. Also, 
they were bred to have that coat so that the burrs and stuff didn't stick in it like you know a Havanese or a softer coated dog. Now I think that this came from a time when we didn't have dryers and we nobody really did dry their dogs and of course I believe that if you did wash the top coat um, of a terrier and you didn't dry it obviously there are going to be problems and even one that is dried improperly will also lift and that's called a blown coat so a blown coat is basically when um, you can see underneath the coat you can kind of get your fingers easily underneath the coat you want the coat to be laying in layers tight to the body so the truth is that clean hair and clean skin grow hair and um, properly cleaned hair so coat <clears throat> excuse me, a little, uh -huh. <coughs> properly cleaned hair, not one with a harsh detergent that just absolutely strips everything out of the coat, um, does look better and is truer to the dog's natural texture. So of course we need the oils, etc., in the dog's coat to have that texture. Um, but once you get too much of a buildup of oil, that oil also picks up environmental debris, right? It picks up dirt and dust from around your home, dirt and dust outside. It, and that is when our dogs don't have a true texture, right? Is when our, the coats are picking up other things. So the idea is to get the coat clean, showing its true texture, but then stripping it and drying it properly so that it lays back down. So the error in bathing the wire coat is when you bathe it in the wrong product that strips out everything and when you don't dry it properly. So the coat will lay closer to the body, the color will definitely be much better on a clean dog and skin problems will be far fewer because of course if you're not bathing part of your dog that's where skin problems are going to happen um, and you're not going to see it because you're not bathing it and drying it so it's harder for you to detect a skin problem until it is a much much bigger problem. Um, so when we go to prep the wire coat, um, so preparing it like for grooming, um, you know, we're going to clean the ears, we might do some spot treatment on some urine stained areas with saving grace. I love the big G slicker for just about anything. Um, I like the long tooth butter comb or also the Jill comb is one of my favorites. Um, ice on ice detangling spray. Um, I like the pro knives, you know, the finer work is going to be done with um, the, the fine and extra fine knives, but the prepping of the coat is typically done with the coarse or about a medium knife. Um, we at Chris Christensen have two different chalks. So we have the white ice chalk and the Lanny's chalk. Um, and people often ask me what the difference is. So white ice chalk is the brightest, whitest chalk. And Lanny's chalk, although it is completely white, it's great for your white dog. It is um, formulated more to have more grip to help you strip the hair. So my recommendation is, is that if you're using chalk to only strip and not whiten, so i.e. you're using it on an Airedale, on a Lakeland, on a, you know, a dark Scotty, um, any breed where you're not using it to whiten, I would purchase the Lanny's chalk. Um, and I would purchase the white ice chalk if I had, if I was going to use it for stripping and also chalking up the legs. And we'll show you what we mean by that. But that's when we add the chalk to the head or the legs or other furnishings to give it bulk and texture, typically for the show ring. Um, so that's how I would use the two of them. Um, stone on a stick. Um, another great detailing tool, a pumice, just a plain old pumice stone will work as well. And of course, I envy great for wire coats because we want those wire coats to have that really super sharp, intelligent expression. And we have a lot of white dogs that coarser, more porous coat type tends to pick up and hold on to staining more. So staining between the toes, maybe staining um, around the anus, staining under the eyes, of course, um, and staining in the beard. And so IMB is a great spot treatment, something that is really going to help get rid of that staining naturally and keep it away. And it also does not interfere with the coat texture at all. So these are the things that we would use to prep the wire coat, get it ready for the bath. Um, so there are different methods of stripping the coat. So if you're using a stripping knife, um, which mine is right here, and I just pulled it out of the chalk. 
Sorry about that. Raking with the knife is done first. And I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of what that is. So I want you to be careful that your knife is not too new or sharp as it will cut the coat and try stripping it through a carpet sample or an old bath mat to make it less sharp. So the truth of the matter is um, when you buy stripping tools is it's hard to make a dull product, right? So the best analogy I have um, is actually think of a cast iron frying pan, right? Cast iron frying pans are like the cooks go to, they can do anything in the kitchen, but there is actually nothing worse than a brand new cast iron pan. A brand new cast iron pan needs to be seasoned so that it works properly, so that it has some nonstick pro properties, so that it just delivers a taste and the cooking ability into the food that you want. And so the same comes and you can't make a seasoned cast iron pan. You can't do it. You can't recreate that in a factory. And this is the same with stripping tools. So whether it's like a Coat King rake, um, a stripping knife, obviously stones are a little bit different, but any stripping knife, you can't manufacture those dull. They have to be made with a sharper edge. So I will show you what I mean by stripping one through a bath mat because that basically you want to season your stripping tools. Now, some people say you can simply doing but by like sticking it in the gravel in your driveway for a month. Um, I've done that. I don't really recommend it. I like just like using an old bath mat or something and going through it. Um, so stone on a stick. Um, Michelangelo stones are great for fine details. And of course, using your fingers a lot um, is really, really going to help you. Uh, in the salon, you're going to use a Coke King or a tea rake quite a bit, um, more than you would really use one on a wire coat that you are stripping for the ring. So, uh, you know, a typical wire coat dog, like maybe some of our shorter legged ones, we might use the rake or the tea rake, rake on, like a Coke King or the tea rake. But typically, we aren't going to use those on our terriers that are going into the ring very much, unless you have a very, very hairy one that hasn't been groomed for a long time, or maybe one that had been shaved in some areas and you're trying to just like really rake out some of that undercoat. So it'd have to be a dog with a really blown coat that you're really getting a lot of undercoat out to go to the tea rake. Um, or the Coat King, except in the salon. I do think the Coat King and the T-Rake are great in the salon for getting that transition between where you've shaved the jacket and the skirt, the furnishings, right? So because we don't want a line there, we want that blended and I find those work really well in the salon. So to demonstrate some of what I was just talking about, I'm going to show you two different methods and I am going to stop sharing my screen and we are going to flip over to Fifi right here. And so I'm going to show you a few different methods that we would use. So when we talk about raking out our dog, here is my coarse, well, this is actually a medium knife. So I would use a coarse or a medium knife and I'm going to use it like a rake. So I'm right-handed, this is a right-handed knife and here is Fifi, right? So Fifi stays really well. She doesn't need her grooming arm today. And so say I'm gonna rake the undercoat out of the jacket part of Fifi. I'm going to use my knife and I'm gonna use it like on about, let's say a, if that's 90 degrees, so like a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to hold the skin tight with my other hand, and I'm going to rake the undercoat out by just like taking a little section and pulling the coat towards me. And from that, I am going to get out the undercoat. So I'm raking out the undercoat, and you can see it there. Now, I would use the same method in the salon, um, with a Coat King type rake. This is again a coarse rake and same thing. I'm holding the skin tight because you don't want the skin going back and forth. That's how you're going to catch the skin and um, you could nick your dog. And I'm going to use the Coat King and I'm going to go through the thing in the coat in the same way. Always going in the direction. Very important with wire haired dogs on the jacket. You do everything in the direction that the coat grows and I'm going to rake it out. Now you can see that the Coat King took out far less hair even though it's a bigger tool because it's a coarser tool. So that's why it will work better in the salon, not quite as good um, for dog show dogs that have less undercoat. Now you could also in the salon blend the jacket into the furnishings with the Coat King, pulling it again down through the line that you would have between the joke jacket and the furnishings. And as well, 
you could use the tea rake, which is a Chris Christensen product, and same thing, you could use it to blend between the jacket and the furnishings. So those are the three methods that I would recommend um, when stripping. This is for raking out the coat. Now when you're actually using the knife to strip, it's the same coarse knife, but now I'm gonna use the knife with my, my thumb was here when I was raking, but now I'm gonna use the thumb to grip the hair. So what we mean by that, so this is when we're stripping out a pattern, stripping out the looser hairs. Basically, when you are taking the jacket down once a week, you're gonna take about every seventh hair is your goal. So you're gonna like pull the hair up from the jacket and use your thumb to use it with the knife and pull those longer hairs out. We're not raking, we're, it's called topping off the coat where we're taking off the longer hairs with our stripping knife and our thumb. So I'm catching that, and you can see how we get a different kind of hair even on a model dog. We're not getting the thick, dense undercoat out. We're getting longer strands of hair that are looser because we're picking them up with our thumb. Now, this is where people think that the knives are often too sharp when you buy them, which we just explained, just like a pan, uh, a cast iron pan, that they often can be. So for example, if you had a carpet, a piece of old big fluffy fabric, what I would do with my brand new knife is I would take it and I would just run it through it, you know, like for maybe 20 minutes, like all over the carpet or an old bath mat, um, this is something that my cat lays on, on my office chair, and I'm just gonna run it through, and I'm not gonna pay attention, right? It's just a rug. Same with my coat king. This will help dull down my coat king so it doesn't cut the hair. I'm just gonna keep running it through an old bath mat, an old carpet will do, something you don't care about, or an old big fuzzy blanket like this. And again, you're just trying to dull the blade. So you're gonna do that for about maybe 20 minutes, maybe. Um, two or three times before you use it, or if you notice that it's still sharp after you have tried to season your knife, um, yeah, you can really see how it would make a difference. Oh, I just threw some cell fronts on the floor, so let's not worry about that. All right, so I hope that that helped you understand the difference between raking and stripping, and also seasoning some of our equipment, which I think is very important. And we will get back to our slideshow. Um, so the other thing we want to talk about is when you are stripping, so we are doing the method with the thumb and the knife where we're pulling out the longer coat, uh, not necessarily when we're raking, you can add a little bit of white chalk to where you are stripping. It helps you pick up the coat either with your knife and your thumb or if you're only using your fingers. So you can just loosely, you know, in a section about, um, this big, <laughs> the section about the size of a softball, I'd put some chalk and then I would strip that area, add a little more chalk, strip that area. You could also use R7 ear powder. R7 ear powder is great for this because it's very, very grippy. Really, really helps you strip that excess hair out. So that's another tip for you right there. And moving on. Okay, so now we are ready to bathe our wire coated dog. So we have, you know, done this, the stripping, you want to do all, especially all the raking, um, and as much as the rough trimming as you can before the bath. And why is this? Well, we've just added either chalk or perhaps R7 to the coat to help us strip it and get the, gr the grip of the coat. So we want to wash that out. Um, as well, stripping causes a lot of dirt and dander. Um, on some dogs, they can be quite sensitive to it in the beginning when you're first stripping them. So, you know, we want to make sure we get that done. So we're getting that debris, the bulk of the debris out of the coat. So I do love Clean Start for Terriers because it does get that kind of oily coat really clean. It gets that chalk and those extra products that we use to get the stripping done out of the coat. But it's not such a harsh detergent that it strips so much out of the coat that the natural oils aren't left. They definitely are. Um, Spectrum One shampoo is great. That's made for our coarser coated dogs. Fair advantage. I really like for my short legged terriers because it creates that lovely volume without making the coat softer. Um, of course, we're going to use Happy Eyes or Eye Envy to do the facial wash. Um, again, the Eye Envy system, we could use that 
on the pre bath for around the face, um, in, in between the toes, around the butt, all those places. Now, if you absolutely positively cannot bring yourself to wash your dog's jacket, um, for whatever reason, I suggest that you wash all the furnishings as we've described. So the furnishings are the chest hair, the belly hair, all the leg hair, tail hair, if it's like a dandy or a breed that has tail hair, um, and all their head hair. So those would be the furnishings. And if you absolutely positively cannot bring yourself to wash the jacket, or maybe there's a reason you're not going to wash the jacket, maybe you're, obviously we're not washing the jacket every day at a dog show, So, but maybe your dog needs a bit of clean up in there. I really like dry breeze, which is um, it's a dry shampoo and it goes in there and it cleans and does not change the texture. So this is the product. These are the products I would use for the bath. So um, products that we need for treating problem areas. So of course, a lot of dogs that are stripped do have that more sensitive skin from the stripping. So we really love Peace and Kindness Shampoo. It has 30 parts per million of colloidal silver, which is very soothing. It cleans up like little, you know, maybe they scratch at themselves after you've stripped them, any little irritations on the skin. It's really, really, it is very peaceful for their skin. It's well named. Um, as well, we have the Peace and Kindness Spray. Um, which you can just spray anywhere that there's irritation. Maybe you did a lot of flat work under the chin, through the ears, anywhere you see redness or irritation, just lightly spray with the Peace and Kindness spray. Or if it's an area that you need the Peace and Kindness to like kind of stick to a little bit more, you could use the gel as well. And uh, we will go more into depth on INB at the end of this webinar. So conditioning the wire coat. So even though they are wire coated breeds, we do want them to be conditioned. Um, we never ever under any circumstances do we condition the top coat, right? So the top coat is not conditioned. We want the top coat to be cl as close to the natural texture as possible, which is why we want it clean, but not conditioned. But with wire coated breeds, often the better, the more wiry the coat is, the less furnishings they have. And, you know, we are a people that likes the aesthetically pleasing look of having our dog's furnishings look um, profuse, profuse and look in balance with the rest of the dog. If you're sending a dog out of the salon, of course you want the furnishings to be big and puffy and look really beautiful for your customer. And of course, in the dog show, that goes without question. It's the finishing touch to your dog. Um, again, I love Spectrum One Shampoo. It does the job, it gives that texture, um, and it does condition. It's also very easy to work with. You could also use, after you bathe, it does cut your drying time down by up to 30%. And I say up to 30% on a wire coat, because a lot of wire coats are quite fast drying anyway. But after you bathe, it's just a bit of a lighter conditioner, and I think you'll really like it. So styling and drying. So must haves for finishing the st and styling and drying the coat are um, the T-Rake, which I showed you, the Extreme Dryer, um, the Magic Mister using Bottoms Up. So I love our Magic Mister because it works seamlessly with um, the Two Extreme Dryer. So I'm gonna just stop sharing for a minute. So if you have um, the extreme dryer and you want to put some bottoms up in your magic mister, you would fill it to the 200 line, which is right here with bottoms up. And here is the bottoms up. And then you would fill the rest with water and then boomo presso, you're done. So you're drying with your, it just easily fits onto the nozzle of your dryer like this. Um, you can take off the hose part and put it right on the gray part of the nozzle. Um, that's recommended, but that's not how I do it. And then you are ready to go because this dial tells you how much you're going to put in the coat, whether it's going to be more concentrated when it's all the way to the right or less concentrated all the way to the left. And so I like it, you know, usually fairly concentrated. I've already decided how much I want in here. So I have it all the way to the right. And then this button is when I'm putting bottoms up into the hair, when I depress it and when I have it off, I am not. So when it's not on, I can just use it like a regular force dryer. But when I want some bottoms up, like into the furnishings, into the chest hair, um, I just simply press a button. I don't have to change my dryer 
dryer hose. I, I can do it on the fly. It saves so much time, which time is money, and it just gets the product right into the root of the hair, which is exactly where we want it, is at the root to like just pluck, plump everything up right from the root of the hair. So that is one of my definite go-tos for drying the wire coat is the bottoms up and the magic mister. Um, I love also coat dressing. So coat dressing is like a mousse, except that it is in aerosol form. So you need to shake it up and you can just look on your little screen here and you can just see it comes out. And this is so useful because it can get everywhere into the coat and very, very evenly. You're not spot putting it in spots. Of course, mousse that you can spot treat is excellent, but if you want the all over volume, the all over holdability, of a mousse, you can just use coat dressing, easy peasy. Um, also, if you did, you could always spray it into your hand and it does foam up like mousse. And then you could also spot treat it as well, like spot style it. So this is why I like it because it does two things in one. Of course, if you're a more traditionalist and wanna use our thick and thicker mousse or any of our other mousses, that's great as well. Um, the butter comb is great, my favorite. Um, the one that is traditionally used is the one we've shown here, which is the 005, which has the, the coarser pin and the finer pin. Excuse me, bit of a dry throat. Um, I really love the Jill comb, which has the staggered comb because it does a really fine work like around the face, but also is great for styling and lifting the coat. Um, our artisan theory, series thinners and chunky blenders again are great for doing those little tiny finishing touches on our wire coats um, so the fusion brushes they are great i recommend the oblong because you're doing a lot of styling with your wire coated breed um, and i also like the breezy brush so the breezy brush in either the 20 millimeter or the 16 millimeter pin, but in the pinky ready pad, because that's our firmest pad, and the shorter the hair, the tougher, the more wiry the hair, the firmer I want my pad. And I also do like the shorter pin length um, for my hard coated dogs, my wire coated dogs. Um, and they also tend to have shorter hair on their furnishings. Now, you know, maybe a Scotty, um, a Westie with the long, the shorter legged terriers with the longer furnishings, or maybe a Glen of Amal for the head or a, a Dandy for the head, you would use um, a fusion brush with a slightly longer pin, or maybe you would move to the breezy brush with like the medium or the softer pad, right? Um, hairspray. Uh, or the thick and thicker aerosol spray. I kind of prefer the thick and thicker aerosol spray. Um, and this is the reason. Terriers, um, e even more than some other breeds, they don't want to feel the stickiness because they really want to feel that coat texture. This is judges. And the thick and thicker gives you that holdability. You can still comb through it. You can still strip it. So you, when you're styling your dog, like maybe you're stripping and you're trying to like look at the outline or maybe you're trying to strip some of the hair out of the head, like you're doing some fine work on the head, you can use the thick and thicker aerosol spray and it still has combability, um, but it has hold and it doesn't feel sticky to the judges, which is why I personally love it. I also think it's an excellent, excellent, um, product for the salon. And the reason I think that is this, is that, you know, people, they want their pets to look great when they pick them up at the salon. You want them to look great. Nobody wants them to feel sticky. The thick and thicker aerosol spray doesn't make them feel sticky. So you can put a, a Westie out with a cute little Westie head and you can give it a little spray of thick and thicker. It's not going to attract dirt like hairspray can, and it's not going to feel sticky to the owner when they pick it up. So it's great for the salon and great for um, going into the show ring. It's just such a great spray. Um, I love the Ionic bristle brush for terriers. I think of anything that I've said here, this is definitely a must um, just for cleaning the top coat and getting it nice and flat to the body. You know, there is a saying out there that your good top coat, your good jacket on your show terrier, you need to do 100 strokes a day. And I do this with my Ionic brush. I love that it has the brass between the boar bristle, really helps to just, it cleans debris out of a dog's coat like you have never seen. Also really good for Kerry Blue Terriers for putting that nice Marcel into their coat as well. 
Um, the Andreas brush, which is our other boar bristle brush, is a great brush for terriers. I like a lot of boar bristle for those wiry coats. And of course, you need the pro knives, which we've already shown you in um, coarse and fine. So the fine is actually a folding knife, but they are all pro knives. Some are just folding and some are not. Okay, so very, very important when we're talking about terriers, and this is whether you're in the salon, you're a pet owner, or you're getting ready for show, even though styling and correction happens with the hot dryer, you can still think about your finished product with the forced air dryer. So for the, I've always said that for the first 50% of forced air drying, so most wire coated dogs, I'm going to get them forced dried about 85 to 90%. Um, with my force dryer. And for the first half of that force drying, in other coat types, I tell you, I don't really worry about the direction. The exception is the wire coated dog. You are always worried about whether in the salon or whether you are doing your show dog or your pet dog at home, you are always worried about the direction that you are going in when you're doing the jacket. It's true that for the furnishings, for the first 50% of the force dry, I'm not going to worry about it, but the jacket, I'm always going with the grain of the hair, really getting that coat flat to the body. Um, then for the legs, um, I'm going to just start stylizing my dry during the last 50% of my force dry. So in the stylized dry, it's the hot dryer is where those corrections really happen. So at this point, I'm definitely going to use an Ionic brush or the Andreas, but again, the Ionic is by far my favorite for that top coat for best results. It's such, the, the bristles are so tight together and with this copper panel in the middle, it just really does part of the work for you and gets that coat nice and flat and tight to the body, even if you're in the salon and you have shaved that top coat. Um, the big G, now you might want to do the big G in like the baby or the medium for most of our wire coated type breeds. Um, it's great for the legs because it gets the coat as straight as possible while creating volume and really important the separation in the coat. Um, one thing about our brushes, most of them come in these plastic boxes and I highly recommend that you keep those boxes because it keeps your brushes newer for much longer. It keeps dirt and debris out of the pins when you're not using it and off the pad. It, you know, what if another product falls and leaks onto the pad, which could degenerate the pad. Um, you don't have to worry about it if they are in the box. Most of my brushes, my boxes look like hell. They're covered in duct tape or washi tape or masking tape or whatever, but my brushes look amazing. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is that, you know, your tools are an investment and please register your Chris Christensen products. Um, you know, their return policy is great. I've seen people come up to Justin when we are at a show and just with a picture of their brush that broke or the handle came off, which does happen, right? We sell a lot of brushes and he just hands them a new one, right? We don't want your old one back. We don't want you to waste the money. We just want you to be happy and, you know, we stand behind the product. So that's amazing. Um, I like to use an oblong brush, like I said, while hot drying for styling and correcting waves and cowlicks. And if you dog has a lot of waves and cowlicks, um, I'm going to start using the hot dryer on those areas when it's only about 50% dry. You don't really have a lot of that kind of problem with, um, the, the wire coated breeds that are stripped, but you could have that problem with the one, the dogs that are in the salon that are shaved. Um, and if you struggle with keeping your top coat um, down and flat, once you are done drying, turn your hot dryer to medium and dry for an additional 10 minutes. Um, I just did a troubleshooting session with a poodle person and they were and their dog just simply wasn't dry at the skin, which is why nothing else will turn out. And never is this more true than for our wire coated breeds. And the reason that I say that is if we go back to like one of the first slides when we talked about how nobody used to ever bathe the wire coated breeds, that was why, because they never were really sure if they had the top coat dry. They really didn't have a way to dry them. We didn't use dryers on our dogs then. People rarely used them on their own hair. Um, so make sure that it is dry. And the best way to do that is once you are done drying with the hot dryer is dry them for another 10 minutes on medium or cool because all hot hair feels dry. If you dry them on medium and cool, turn the dryer off, leave them on the grooming table, 
wait for five minutes and then touch the coat wherever it's cool to the touch that's where it's still wet and that's where you have to dry it because that's where the problem area will start where the hair will start lifting up and then people say well you never should have bathed and dried it most top terrier people do so here is an example of the stylized dry so if you look at the blue arrows the blue arrows would represent basically the jacket. So this is all the areas that get stripped down to the skin. And in those areas, we are always, always going with the grain of the coat because we want the coat to sit nice and tight and flat to the body. And the green arrows represent where for the first 50%, you could kind of dry it any way you wanted and the last 50% of your force dry and all of the hot dry you're going to pay attention so you're going to go up so in the end we want the fronts of the front legs to go up the elbow to go back and down the fronts of the front legs to go up and then the hawk as well to go up so some of the area arrows that are double sided would show where we you know the area in the stifle we want we're going to dry it up for till it's about 90% dry. Then at the very end, we're just gonna dry it down. That's how we create the volume. But in the end, the coat has to lay down. Um, I typically never use the forced air dryer on the face. I don't think dogs like it. I have enough time to dry the hair on the face without using a forced dryer. And of course, at the end, we always want the beard to be pointing forward. So here is another example of a wire coated type dog. Um, so a Brussels Griffon and again, the jacket, we are always, which is represented by the blue arrows. This is the area that is stripped out. We are always going with the grain of the coat. And then the green arrows represent the furnishings where we can go, you know, against the grain to get the volume that we need. And then at the end, you know, pull out the hair, trim it exactly how we want it. And another great visual here, again, the blue arrows represent coat that is pulling out and that you're gonna use the force dryer always going with the grain. And then the green arrows are arrows where, you know, you could go back and forth to create the volume, but then the last time you brush it, you're gonna go the direction you want it. This is a good, bit, a good representation because this is how you would also like do a Westy face or a dandy head or a Glen of a mall head, right? You're really just gonna get all that volume out of the head that you possibly, possibly can. So these are examples of the stylized dry. And again, we would do it till they are about 80% dry um, with, or 80 to 85 on a wire coat typically for me, with the forced air dryer. I do not use the forced air dryer on the head typically. And then I'm going to use my hot dryer to finish off the styling. Um, so trimming the wire coated dog in the salon. So um, again, another thing is, we don't want you to shave the top coat too short in the salon because it will always ruin the balance of the trim. So for a long time, um, people in the salon were taught to get the, the jacket, the top coat, um, as close to the body as possible because it looked more like it was stripped. But we found that that truly isn't the case. We want you to leave it a little bit longer. So like maybe a 4F or the equivalent in a clipper comb would be about as short as I would take it because otherwise we can't get it blended into the furnishings very well. You're always going to have, you, nobody likes to see that hard line on a Westie between the top coat and the furnishings or any of, you know, I think Westies are a great example because we see it all the time and, you know, they're a popular breed in the salon. So spend some extra time blending the top coat into the furnishings. It will make all the difference in the world. And remember, you know, we want your salon trims to go out the door and for people to say, hey, like, where did you take your dog to be groomed so that you get that kind of business? And we think we can help you do that if you just follow some of our tips. I would also use the Coat King and or the T-Rake to help blend that area between the top coat and the furnishings. So knowing what you want your trims to look like, even if it's a client's companion dog, will make all the difference in your finished product. And if you don't know what you want them to look like, like if you don't have your recipe, how will you fill in the steps to get there? So if your client wants your, the dog to look a certain way, use photos, right? Ask the client to text you the photo from their phone, take a picture of what, you know, what, when the dog leaves, if they're really happy with the trim. Um, if you tend to groom many of a certain breed or repeat clients, find photos 
of those dogs and show them to your clients. So if you're known for your Westie trims, like I said, and people, you know, are asking, and then all of a sudden you get a new client, show them what you think you could do. Also be honest, right? Like if you get a dog into the salon who needs to be shaved right down, who the last trim they had was so out of balance in one haircut, you're not going to be able to solve that. Just be honest and tell them what you can do in one or more visits to your salon. And for show dogs, I think it's absolutely vital to find photos of the ideal that you are working towards and use your artistic ability and your own interpretation of the standard to reach those goals. Um, so these are different wire coated breeds where we use similar techniques and products, but we could create quite different outlines, right? So um, these dogs all have had a stripping knife on them, all have had a coat king on them, all had their top coats bathed and dried. And, you know, you can see that we can get different outlines, even though we're using the same technique. We can create a rougher outline, a smoother outline, or a very stylized outline. So an example of grooming the wire-coated dog in the salon. So these square short-legged terrier, terrier types, I'm still gonna use a clarifying or harsh coat type shampoo in the salon. I still am never gonna condition the top coat because it's gonna lay flatter and better. I'm gonna force dry the dog to 50% minimum and then finish with a hot dryer. Uh, for most of the top coat uh, in the salon, I would use a slicker brush. Um, please make sure it's one with round ground pins so that you're not scratching the dog's skin. Otherwise, I would use a bristle brush like the Ionic, like I described earlier. Um, you can still use coarse and medium knives to blend everything in together. And always in the salon, you're going to choose coat rakes, spinning shears, and blenders over using a straight shear. So the only places I would really use a straight shear on this dog would be around the, the pads of the feet, um, and around the feet, the tips of the ears, and the back of the tail. Do not take the top coat too short because we do not want the line between the furnishings and the top coat to be very, you know, to be pronounced. Um, I'm going to style it with some some bottoms up as I'm drying, some mousse or coat dressing, and for the show dog, cholesterol and chalk. Um, your eye should always see a square with these short-legged dogs, and remember that while you are styling them. So finishing the coat on your wire-coated dog. Um, I also really love V-Force. Uh, V-Force is a um, medium hold. It gives you hold and volume, and there is zero residue. It is absolutely amazing. Um, I like thick and thicker aerosol spray. It has more hold than the V-Force. So for instance, I would say I would use the V-Force um, in a Westie head, an Affen Pinsir head, in beards, in lakes, anywhere I needed more volume. And I would use the thick and thicker spray for the holdability for the final styling. Um, so now is the time you're going to use your knives that have like a little bit finer work because now you're going to do more detail work. Those little pink Michelangelo stones are amazing for doing little bits around the eyes, um, inside the ears. They just are places where like if your fingers just don't have enough grip, these stones are really good. A terrier palm pad is a um, kind of a specialized tool for wire-coated dogs going into the ring. It really helps with their leg furnishings. Um, I would use a fluff for sure or thick and thicker mousse to really help bulk up those legs. Shine for sure is one of my go-to products for the final touch before I go into the ring because it smells great and just like gives that instant shine that just makes everything look beautiful. Um, I do like the thick and thicker volumizing gel. I use it on eyebrows and beards. So um, instead of hairspray on eyebrows and beards, I typically like the thick and thicker gel. Um, Hold for sure hairspray can be used like on dogs with like more head hair. So your Westies, your Affen Pincers, um, you could use it on breeds that have to have more of that kind of poodly hold, a dandy Dinmont, breeds like that. Um, obviously you're gonna use white chalk and cholesterol to chalk the legs. Um, okay, so that is our demo for the wire coated breed type. So I'm gonna get on to some of our other products. So Angels Grooming Apparel. So I am wearing some Angels Grooming Apparel in this beautiful purple color. Um, and 
they have absolutely great products. See, in the back of this is completely vented. It's um, so it's nice and cool to wear. It's really comfortable. The hair doesn't stick to it. Those wire coated braids, those little hairs want to get into absolutely everything else I've ever worn. So I was really impressed with these, this angel apparel. So their story is, um, Angel saw what was, there's actually a person named Angel. She saw what was on the, the market and she met with designers in her area to develop a line of high-end designer grooming apparel. And she talked to lots of groomers in the industry and made sure that she had great, great, great fabrics because, you know, we're out there grooming all day. We're meeting the public. We want to look great. And if we look great and feel great, we're going to do a better job, right? That's human nature. Um, the entire line is designed in LA. So that's basically, you know, as close as we can get to having things locally made and things are designed. There's so many different patterns. Like I couldn't even get some of them because I've just, they said, no, they're too popular. You have to have something else, which was kind of funny, but great. Okay. So some of the questions that I had, last week was about sizing for the Angels Apparel. So um, I'll talk to you just one moment about that. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm just gonna stand up and you're not gonna be able to see all of me, but you're gonna, so I'm gonna stand on my tippy toes. So I wear typically a small or um, a small medium shirt and this is a medium Angels. I don't find it a lot bigger than the small that I wore last week. It's super comfortable. It has these great, great pockets, but you can see I typically wear a small and so this is the medium. So I would say, and it's a little bit off my shoulders and I kind of have broad shoulders for my frame for how big I am everywhere else. So I would say if you're worried about sizing and you, you know, you look at those things online when you buy clothes online, I would say it runs true to size to a bit big right? It doesn't run, you're not going, if you wear a medium and you buy a medium, it's not going to be tight. If you wear a, you know, if you're a small to extra small and you buy a small, could be a tiny bit big. Tiny bit big is fine in the salon because sometimes you're going to wear a sweater, sometimes you're not. So yeah, I had that question quite a bit this week, so thanks for that. And look, they have like such super cute things, right? Like they have aprons, they have this damask pattern, that suit, that's the one I wanted, that was super popular. They're like, no, no, you have to wait. We have too many people that want it. We don't wanna, we wanna be able to sell it to them. Okay, so I totally got that. But yeah, look how cute they are and the little skirts and yeah, really, really nice stuff. And great that it's locally made. Um, and you can get it from Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears or like their own website, Angels Grooming Apparel. Boom, okay, I envy. So, sorry about my chair. So I envy. So in wire coats, so extremely important that they have that sharp, intelligent expression. Nothing ruins it more than eye stains, which we see on so many Westies, dandies, breeds like that, and the beard staining, which we see in a lot of terriers. Now, why do we see so much staining in terriers? Well, Part of the reason is, is that they have that wiry coat. That wiry coat tends to be more porous. So any, so they stain easier. That's how it is, right? So we see more staining in toy breeds because often their eyes are little and their tear ducts um, are smaller. So like their tear ducts have problems like just even uh, ducting out environmental debris. So that's a reason why a lot of toy breeds have staining. So a lot of reasons why our wire coats is because the coat is more porous. So something that might not stain um, a different kind of coat, like a harsher, co coarser coat is going to stain a wire haired coat more easily. Plus we have a lot of white. We have a lot of white legs, white feet. They tend to um, get a lot of staining between their toes as well. And this is where eye envy is absolutely amazing because you can use it on the eye staining. You can use the beard on the beard staining and you can also use it between the toes. So for me, eye envy is a no brainer. I've always recommended colloidal silver for staining as it's completely safe and it's a natural antibiotic. And I envy is all natural. Every product contains some colloidal silver. And this company has put together a package that removes stain using a unique system that is all natural. So um, I really, really love the beard um, spray as well. I've been using it on my mom's Sky Terrier and it has been working amazing. All right, so facial cleanser. 
is our step one. So the facial cleanser is uh, right here. It looks exactly like it does in that photo. And it, you use it to wash the face. Um, it cleans away the crusty debris and eye, chart and eye discharge. And you can also use it on the beard. You can use it between the toes. And you just like simply put a pump into your hand and you foam it up. And I put it like in the eyes, in the feet, in wherever there is staining in the beard, that's where I'm gonna use it. And then I like to, especially on the face, use a couple wet washcloths to rinse it out. That's how I like to do faces because this product is also used a lot on bully breeds, which I always use a face cloth to do that. Um, and I, it, it's completely safe because it's all natural. And you're gonna use this instead of a whitening or a brightening or a bluing shampoo because those, especially on the coarser wire coated dogs, they can um, make the coat more porous because that's what they're doing. They're actually like blowing open the hair follicle where this product does not. So the next step um, for the eyes, the feet, and around the butt would be the cleaning solution, which is right here. And as well with the cleaning solution, they have these um, wipes. Well, they're not wipes, they, I, they call them wipes, but they, you have to add the solution to the wipe. And I mean, this looks like a normal cotton round that you could buy at the drugstore, which you could use. But the reason you're not going to use it is that these have a different texture. They're like um, a thick paper towel, like a like you can't rip it like a paper towel, right? Like I can rip it if I really try, but like a paper towel will be shredded by now. So they don't soak. So the cotton round is going to use up more of the product, right? So we don't want to use up more of the product. We want the product to stay on the actual pad. So these, and they're cheap. So I recommend that you use them. Um, so then once you have washed the affected area, and we're gonna go through this really quickly once I run through all the slides. Once you've washed the affected area, then you are going to use the pad and you're going to clean, whether it's between the toes um, or you know, around the butt, wherever you have that kind of yeasty kind of staining, right? Um, it's completely natural. We're not putting it in the dog's eyes, but if it did some to get in the dog's eyes, you don't have to panic, it's fine but that is the, the, it's the aim to put it on the, the stained area. So then the next step is the tear stain remover powder, which can, contains um, boric acid, which is a pharmaceutical grade drying agent. And this little brush, and like I said, I'm gonna do a little run through at the end. This little brush um, is just great for applying it. Again, you don't need to buy the brush, you can use your finger, um, but the brush is inexpensive and does work Great. Um, it works as a treatment. It's not a cover up, right? So it's going to take a few applications. You're going to use it every single day till the staining has gone away and then once a week to um, just maintain it. So they put it all together in a little kit. It comes in this cute little bag with a little instruction booklet and in the kit you are going to get the application pads, the powder, the tear stain removing solution and the little brush for $30, I believe in the US and 35 in Canada um, or 37 if you get the big applicator brush. But to me, this is really, really inexpensive for a problem that so many people have. Like the number one question I get asked is about tear staining, right? How do we get rid of that staining? Or, and it's the blemish, it's the blemish that everybody notices. You have a pet Westie in your house and people come in, it's like, oh, it has eye stains. You're in the show ring and you look down the line, and, oh, that one has eye stains. Like it's something we always notice, right? So, so easy to get rid of it. Um, so the INB beard stain remover is, again, you're just using the cleanser on the beard. So you can use the same one and then you just buy the beard spray and spray it right in there. Again, I've been using this on my mom's Sky Terrier, which is a blue Sky Terrier, but has that red staining. And it's incredible the difference it's made in a couple of weeks. Um, so I've explained to you why this product is such a must need. No one likes tearing or beard stains. They are unsightly. They pull away from the finished effect, whether you are a salon groomer, a pet owner, or going in the show ring. Um, it will start working instantly and all new regrowth will be white. 
on dogs that have been previously bleached or whitened, um, the, the staining is first going to turn pink because it's kind of counteracting how porous the hair was made by the other whitening agents. Um, it's easily incorporated into your salon grooming services and you can even offer kits for clients to buy and use at their own because it's so safe and extremely, extremely easy to use. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we are going to go to Fifi and trust me soon COVID will uh, allow me to go pick up some dogs and I don't have a dog with tear staining and I have black dogs which are not very conducive. Okay so here we have Fifi, here's her eye and we're going to say that this area here is stained. So the first thing we do is we're going to take some of our um, tear stain facial cleanser and we're going to cleanse. So you can cleanse all around the eye and you don't want to just put it on the top of the hair. You want to put it like all around that hair, right? So whether it's under the eye, in between the toes, um, around the butt, you're going to use the same method. Then because I'm doing this every day, I find it inconvenient um, to, you know, especially for the pet owner, but even for me, with like all the facilities at my disposal, I find it inconvenient to do this in the bathtub every day. So I'm just gonna have um, a big bowl, two face cloths, I'm gonna have them quite wet, and then I'm gonna rinse out this cleanser, right? So I'm gonna rinse it out, whether it's here in the beard or in between the toes. Then you saw me put the solution on the pad, and again, I'm gonna take this pad and I'm just gonna get as much of that solution as I can in the stained area. And again, going underneath, because I want to go all around that hair shaft. Again, not just on top. Just on top is not going to do it. You need to go everywhere the staining is, back and forth. Um, you can rub it a little bit. You don't want to scrub right in there. And then once you're done with that, you're going to take the powder and this brush. And you can see this brush um, picks up the powder and like really you have a hard time getting some of it off, which means you're going to get that powder exactly where you need it. And again, I'm dabbing it on top and I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to go everywhere I have some staining. So if I had to go all the way to the end of the hair shaft, I would, right? Then you can pick up a little bit more and you can go all the way to the end of the hair shaft. Same thing, you could go between the toes. So bada bing, bada boom, you're done. You're done until tomorrow, right? If you have a dog that has the staining in the beard, so we all know what that looks like, can be from food, can be from other environmental things, um, but the staining is still unsightly, especially in these wire-coated breeds. Again, you're gonna use the cleanser and you can just towel it out, rinse it out. Then you're simply just gonna take, even my mom did this, so it's easy, and you're just gonna spray the beard cleaner right in here. It smells good. Um, it immediately makes the beard, because you know those beards really stink. I, Appen Pincer beards always stink. And you just spray that in there and boom, you're done. So what I love about this system after recommending different recipes that I have had for a long time, um, is that it is so easy to use. It works almost instantaneously. Anybody can take you know, it's five minutes for the eyes, five minutes for the feet, five minutes for the butt. Um, most likely you don't have a dog that has staining in all these areas. It's literally a minute for the beard because you just use the spray and it is amazing, amazing stuff. So we need to get finished up here as we're getting towards the end of the time. And here we go. So the products I recommend for a general wire coat, care, and styling. We've talked about them all before. Here they are in an easy to look at infographic, so you can go back to this recording. Um, they're gonna be on the Wheatley Wares, the Groomers Pro, the Angels Apparel, and the IMB websites, and you can take a good look at them and see what you want. Just finding my cursor has disappeared. And um, all of these amazing products are available through Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wares, and of course, IMB and Angels Grooming Apparel. Um, if you would like to use the code WIRE15, you will get 15% off any websites run by Groomers Pro. So that's Groomers Pro, IMB, Angels Grooming Apparel. This code expires next Sunday, May 24th. Um, 
I thought today was a different day. Next Sunday, May 24th at midnight, right? So INV and Angels Grooming Apparel are available through both Wheatley Wears and Groomers Pro, but you can visit their own sites like the INV site or the Angels Grooming Apparel site for additional information that maybe you didn't get from me. Um, typically I go a little bit more in depth on the INV, but we were running short of time. I was trying to get through all these slides for you. Um, our friends at Wheatley Wares are amazing. And if you would like to use the code LEDSA for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, you can get 10% off anything on their website until June 18th. And they also have all the Chris Christensen products we have used here, I Envy and Angels Grooming Apparel, and that's how to get a hold of them. So if you haven't met me before, I am Allison of Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and I have the world's first online dog show school and grooming videos. So we are video based. We have um, online video courses where you buy the course, you watch the course over and over and over again at your leisure. You get contact with us. We answer your questions. Um, if you subscribe to our school, we do amazing webinars like this. We have another webinar coming up next week for these same sponsors. We have our own Leading Edge Dog Show Academy webinar on Wednesday where we go more in depth onto some product products. That's a two hour webinar. And you can get absolutely everything in our school 35% off until June 18th by simply using the code webinar 35. So we would absolutely love to see you at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And it's also a way to stay in touch with our incredible sponsors and vendors, Wheatley Wears and Groomers Pro. So like I said, we are an ever growing library of dog show and grooming knowledge. Um, our online courses feature videos, diagrams, ebooks, and more to help you learn how to groom, handle, condition, and style your dog. We have courses for the beginner. We have courses for people that have been top dog. We have everything in between. We have grooming guides for poodles, the award-winning Poodle University. We have videos for Shetland Sheepdogs, Spaniels, Setters, um, the Groomer's Guide to Winning Trims, and many, many more, including our virtual classrooms and webinars. Um, we, this is the virtual classrooms that you can get more information by going to leadingedge.guru slash classrooms. Um, our next one is recipes for show dogs and a toenail tutorial where I show you how to do toenails with the amazing Dyna Groove as well as with toenail clippers. Um, and I talk about different recipes to grow coat for fat dogs to help make them skinny, for skinny dogs to help make them fat, to basically do just about anything, give your dog more energy. And we have a submitted Q&A feature where you can email us with questions and we answer them in a slide with typically a diagram or a go-to. Um, they are indeed a deep dive. And I want to thank you. During this time uh, where the world is very different in, in many, many places and what is happening in the world is different for everybody, everybody's experience during this time is a little bit different. I would like to thank you for spending this hour with us and I hope that you learned something and I hope that you would ask us a question in the future for one of our upcoming webinars. We still have um, at least two more webinars for these great people, Groomers Pro and Wheatley Wears, along with I Envy and Angels Grooming Apparel. And um, I'm Allison, and I just want everybody out there to stay safe. And thank you so much for your time today. Take care.